are under the sun and the okay thank you joshua in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen thank you lord for this wonderful evening thank you for gathering all of us together lord jesus lord you know our hearts desires lord lord bless thank you lord for blessing each one and thank you lord for speaking through aliston all the time lord thank you for the the heart you have given us lord you have given us freely and he is giving us freely lord lord uh thank you for your presence among us thank you for the freedom you are giving us to each one of us to ask questions to understand and learn new things lord lord thank you for helping us to practice what we are learning lord lord walk with us guide us lead us and bless us each and every morning every day every moment thank you jesus thank you holy spirit for helping us thank you guardian angel in jesus name we pray amen 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 okay let's start yeah please go thank you jesus praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus okay so we we'll start praise god so let's uh, so what did we see yesterday uh, we were studying about uh, yesterday what did we see about Joseph. Joshua. 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 Joseph. 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 Genesis 39, one onwards. Yeah. Praise God. So what did we say about Joseph? The world hated him because he was rooted in the word of God. Yeah. You know, don't put the scripture. Don't put the scripture. This is only the vision I'm asking you. What else? You saw Psalms hundred and five. I'm seventeen. Seventeen. And eighteen and nineteen. Genesis thirty nine verse one and one John three thirteen. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes. Praise God. Okay, we'll start. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go to Ephesians chapter two, verse number eight. For by grace are ye saved, are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God. So we are saved by faith, right? And grace. Praise God. So are we saved by faith alone? No. Are we saved by grace alone? No. We are saved by grace through faith. So faith. So the same over here. For by grace are you saved through faith. That means. we are healed by grace we receive it through faith we are delivered by grace we receive it through faith we are set free by grace we receive it through faith we are blessed by grace we receive it through works faith and that of ourselves now it is by faith so did you say for by grace will you be saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god yes 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 all your answers are wrong did you say it once again uh, alistair you will be saved but then sister devi no no we are already saved yeah you are already saved for by grace yeah. are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god it is the gift of god so we are saved by grace but we receive it through faith yeah. by grace through faith okay let's go to matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Enoch Praise the Lord Don't know whether is there or what Okay help with this 
Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Yes, but seek you first the kingdom of kingdom God, of God. And righteousness, and some of these things shall be added unto and you. All. And, and all, all these things. things shall be added unto you. Some of these things, all these things. All these all things. All these things. So has God given us a promise? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What is his promise? Seek you first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, not some, all these things shall be added unto you. So when I am seeking the kingdom of God, when I am seeking his righteousness, all these things. Now, did he say seek you second the kingdom of God? Or did he first. say seek you first the kingdom, first of, God. kingdom of God? First. So what should be our first priority? Seeking all these things or seeking God? God. Seeking God. Now, many a time, where is our focus? On God or all these things? All these things. All these things, things and on ourselves. On all these things. How I can be benefited with all these things. But where should be our focus? On God. On God? In other words, on his word. When my focus is on the word, can I receive what God has from me? No. Then how I receive? Huh? I am asking you a very simple question, not a trick question. When I am focused on the word, can I receive what God has from me? Yes, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. I heard it as on, if you are focused on yourself, I thought. That's why I said. No, I'm saying focused on the word. Oh. So when we are focused on the word of God, when we are focused on the truth, it is the word, it is the truth that is setting us free. Because the Bible says it is the word that sets us free. Not our prayer, not how much I pray, not how much I do. But it is the word of God which is setting us free. So the more I start studying the word of God, the more I start learning the word of God, the more my focus is shifted on the scripture, I am unlocking God's provision into my life. That's why I saying, and all these things, not some of these things, but all these things shall be added unto you. Now, many a times when we are in situations, when we are in trials, we start blasting scriptures. Am I right? Yeah. We start blasting scriptures thinking that my confession is going to bring God on the scene because God does not come unless I call him. So how am I calling? Because I said 600 times the scriptures, God is coming. Because I said 3,000 times, God is coming and working on our behalf. Don't we have to think it? Only when yes. I the scriptures of the word of God can God work in my life. Don't we have the thinking? Yes. You know, I'll tell you one thing. If we are going to have the thinking that the more I start blasting the scriptures, thinking that what I am going to speak, my confession is going to solve the problem, I am operating under a big deception. You know why? Because God does. God is not waiting for us to tell him to come on the scene, but God is already on the scene. I don't have to call God. Now say that word, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let's see what is this righteousness. Praise God. So what is righteousness? Right standing, right standing with God. Right standing, right standing with God. God. Right standing with God, having the very nature of God. Praise God. Okay, uh, let me put this screen. Thank you, Jesus. I can put. You are there, you know? Because I thought you were not there. You know, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Yes, I'm there. Praise God. 1 John 4, 7. Hallelujah. Okay, see that. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because 
as he is, so are we in this world. Now, did he say, because as he is, so are we? Did he say that? Can you repeat? Did he say, because as he is, so are we? Did he stop there or did he continue? Continue. 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 Because as he is, so are we in this world. Now, why is that word in this world very important? Why it is important? In this world. Why is it important? If you say... Yeah, because you know why? The only difference between us and Jesus is that Jesus came in a physical body. Jesus came in a physical body. But today, he is no longer in a physical body. That is the only difference between us and Jesus. He came in a physical body, but today he is no longer in the body. But today we are living in this physical world. So the difference is we are living in this physical world world. That's why he's saying herein is a love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world. As Jesus is as God is so are we in this world. That's why he's saying herein is a love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. So as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Sister Devi, you look confused. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, Jesus came and went, but now Jesus is in the spirit and we are in the physical, no? Yeah, that's what uh, I said. Jesus came on this earth, but now he's no longer in a physical body. But yeah. we are in a physical body, still living in this world. And that is the difference. Mm, yes. That today we are living in this physical world, with the body. Mm. Yes. That's why he's saying, herein is Allah made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus is, as God is, so are we in this world. Hallelujah. Now, who is this he? Jesus. Now, does Jesus deserve to be blessed? Yes. Does Jesus deserve to be favored? Yes. Why? Jesus deserves to be blessed. Jesus deserves to be favored because he obeyed every word of the Father, right? He came as a man. You know, I was wondering when the God said to him when he was baptizing, right? He said, you are my beloved son, begotten son in whom I am well pleased. Even in the transfiguration, he said the same. Now, I was wondering, Jesus did not die at that time. If Jesus did not die at that time, then why is God saying, you are my begotten son in whom I am well pleased? Even before Jesus died. I was thinking God has to say that once he died and once he resurrected, no? No, but because he obeyed God, no? And he came down. Exactly. That was the question I was having. And this is the answer which God gave me because he came down as a man. He obeyed God and he came down as a man. He descended as a man. If I, that's why if I ask you, become an ant, will you become an ant? Any one of you will become an ant? Oh. But if I tell you, you can become the president of the country, how many of you will be ready to take that job? No. Mostly all of us. Mostly all of us. What do you mean by the word mostly? I would only put the word all of us. Ready to take that position. Yeah, all of us, not mostly. But I tell you to become an ant even for one day. What one day? What one hour or two hours? If I tell you to be not even five minutes. No. No, that means we are never going to. You know, we make decisions never to go down, but always to go up. So the will of the Father was for Jesus to come on this earth as a man. Did Jesus obey? Yes. 
Yes, and that is the reason why God is saying, this is my begotten son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So Jesus deserves to be blessed. Yes, Jesus deserves to be favored. Yes, because he agreed to the word of the father. He emptied his glory and came down as a man. He obeyed every word of the father. So today God is seeing us as a righteous God is seeing us as holy. God is seeing us as accepted in his sight. Yes. So God is seeing us, seeing us as accepted in his sight. Now if God is seeing us accepted in his sight, if God is seeing us, you know, righteous in his sight, that means today we are the children of God and we possess the righteousness of God. We possess the kingdom of God. That's why he said, no, it is your job to bring the kingdom of heaven on this earth. So whose job is it to bring the kingdom of heaven on this earth? God's job? Yes. Yeah. It's our job. The more I start knowing what God has finished for me, when I start understanding what God has promised for me, I am literally unlocking the provision of God, the plan of God to work in me. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus has done everything. Will Jesus do for us? No, Jesus will not do for us. Jesus has done everything. But we need to tap into the grace of God by my faith. By my believing. For by grace are you saved through faith. Did he say by grace alone? No. Did he say by faith alone? No. He said by grace through faith. So today we are made righteous. Yes. Today we are made holy. Yes. <coughs> today we are righteous to God. We have the right standing with God. That's why the blessing of the righteous is what? The blessing of the righteous is no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Now, when a person believes that he is the righteousness of God, that means he is believing that no weapon that is formed against him shall prosper. Because he is you know, a person, you know, understanding the righteousness of God. You know, that person knows who he is in Christ. Just give me uh, 1 Peter 5, 5, I think. One Peter five five. Likewise, you younger submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, some of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Did I read the scripture correctly? Can you repeat? <laughs> Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, some of you be subject. All of you. All. All of you. All. So are we supposed, all of us supposed to be clothed with humility? Yes. Are we supposed to operate in humility? Yes. For God resists the proud. Means what? God is resisting the spirit of pride in a person and giving grace to humble. You know, a person who's seeking the kingdom of God, he is seeking righteousness. When a person is seeking the kingdom of God, when a person is seeking the righteous, he is humbling himself to believe the word. He is humbling himself to agree with the word. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. humble. And see what he's saying after that. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time casting all your cares upon him for he cares. Are this cool down? Cares for you. Okay. He cares for you, I think. Yeah, he cares for you. Let's call, you know? Just hold up. Just hold up. Yeah, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So a person can cast his care upon him, 
only when he is seeking the kingdom of God. Because when a person is seeking the kingdom of God and a person is seeking the righteousness of God, he is giving permission to God to work in his life. When I agree to the word of God and I agree to the gospel of God, you know what I'm doing? I'm giving permission for God to work in me. I'm giving permission to his word to work in me. But the only way to give permission to God to work in me, the only way to give permission to the Lord working in me is when I agree to his word, I humble myself. So are you understanding? Okay, write down. My focus should be my focus should be on the word of God My focus should be on the word of God. When I focus on the word, when I focus on the word, when I focus on the word, the byproduct of healing the byproduct of healing, blessing, the, by, the byproduct of healing, blessing, deliverance, 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 shall all be added unto me. Shall all be added unto me. Praise God. That's why he's saying, seek your first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and not some of these things, but all of these things shall be added unto us. So the more I start focusing on the word of God and my uh, focus starts to be on the word my focus starts to be on the scripture that means I am giving God the permission to work in me because God has a mighty plan for us God has a mighty purpose for us and the only way to experience his plan is when I give him the permission to work praise God so does God have a plan for me? Yes. Does God have a purpose for me? Yes. Does God have a mission for me? Yes. But the only way I can experience the plan which he has for me, the purpose which he has for me, is when my focus starts to be on the word and not on the physical circumstance. When my focus is on the word of God, you know what I'm doing? I'm taking that word and unlocking what God has already given to me as an inheritance. Because righteousness is an inheritance. His love is an inheritance. The forgiveness of God is an inheritance. The blessing of God is an inheritance. All this is an inheritance. So when I am seeking God's kingdom and I am seeking his righteousness, I am taking the word of God and unlocking the inheritance that he has for me. And let me tell you, that is when I'm able to experience his provision. That is when I'm able to experience his plan, his purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what is the meaning of the word trust? Purposely committing myself to God. Purposely committing myself to God. That is the first definition. Anyone knows the second definition? Definition of what? Of trust. Purposely committing myself to God. There's another one also. Anyone? I think Not doubting. Not doubting, no. 
constant uh, constancy co consistently constantly constantly consistently remaining the same irregardless of a situation or other people's comments write it down constantly and consistently remaining the same irregardless of a person's situation or comment So when I start studying the word, I'm trusting God, means I'm saying yes to God and no to the devil. That means the devil will always tell me lies. The devil will always speak lies. The devil will always tell me something that is contradicting to the word. But how am I able to overcome it? I'm able to overcome it when my focus is on the word of God. Because the moment my attention is starting to be on the word, that means I'm unlocking the provision of God. I'm unlocking the plan of God to work in me. So the, the key to experience God's plan, I would say, is seeking God's kingdom, seeking his righteousness, because the power which is given to us is when I start seeking his kingdom, I start seeking his righteousness, everything else shall be added unto me by the point. So where should our focus be? Our focus should not be on the lie of the devil, but our focus should be on the truth of the word of God. When my focus is on the truth of the word of God, let me tell you, I am able to experience his plan. I am able to experience his purpose, which he has for me. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Alistair, but uh, the second definition you gave that uh, I have already noted it has patience. Uh, patience. Constantly yeah, yeah. and consistent to remaining the same. I know, I know, I know. It is a, a definition of patience and it can be connected to trust because I would say uh, patience and trust are both interconnected. Okay. Both interconnected. interconnected. Okay, thank you. Because when I'm trusting God, I'm operating in patience. I can't see the answer to my situation, but I'm still going to operate in that patience because okay. I trust God. Okay. I would say joy, patience and trust are all connected. Okay. Joy, you said, right? Joy, also. joy, knowing the end result in the beginning, trust, yeah. purposely committing myself to God, constantly, consistently remaining the same, regardless of the situation or other people's comment, and patience, constantly, consistently remaining the same, regardless of the situation or people's comment. Because when I'm operating in joy, there I'm I'm going to that time gap. When I'm in that time gap, I'm trusting the Lord and I'm operating in patience. So they're all connected. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why we saw in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Just give me that, you know. One Peter five five. You changed the scripture, but it was the same scripture, you know. Likewise, you younger submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Hallelujah. So we are righteous. We are the righteousness of God. Today, as we believe in Jesus, we are made right with God. We have the right standing with God. We are we are possessing his kingdom. We are possessing his righteousness. But the only way to experience the plan of God, which God has for me, is when I know what he has finished for me on the cross. I believe what he has finished for me on the cross. And I receive what he has finished for me through my faith. Hallelujah. So did you understand? Are there any questions, any doubts on this? Praise God. Okay, write down. Trusting God. Trusting God.
interesting part. Should be the first priority. Trusting God should be my first priority. In every area of my life. In every area of my life. See, trusting God should become my lifestyle. It should become my way of living. When I trust God, when I know who God is, that means I am able to experience what he has for me because i would say trust is the key of unlocking the provision trust is the key of unlocking the plan which god has for me. so the more i start meditating on the scriptures start studying the word keeping that word in front of my eyes according to joshua 1 8 that means what i am seeking first the kingdom of god i am seeking his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto us. Praise God. That's why when I know what God has promised for me, and I start believing that what God has promised for me, that means, you know what I'm doing? I am taking the word, and that word is what is being the first priority. I should not be based on the words of the devil. My focus should be on the word of God. My focus should be on the truth. My focus should be on the scripture. When my focus is on the truth of the word of God, when my focus is on the scripture, that means, you know what I'm doing? I am keeping myself soaked in the word regardless of the situation. That's why how many of you remember we studied about mind bath? Yes. This is the perfect time to take a revision. So how many of you have a mind bath every day? You know, is that to say you know, you remember? Okay, I'll lower all hands. So how many of you have mind bath? Let me see how many hands are shooting up and how many people are not having mind bath. No one? No one's having mind bath? One person, one single person. So out of 12 of you, only one person is having a mind bath, right? What is the meaning of the word mind bath? Studying the word of God and pulling down the weeds of stronghold and building new. Pardon? Studying the word of God and pulling down the weeds of stronghold and building new. Okay. New stronghold in the word of God. Okay. You know what is a mind bath? Mind bath is where I I did not hear the teaching of mind bath. Someone is telling me. Okay. <laughs> we have learned that once. We have learned that many times. Praise God. Okay. So if you see what is mind bath? Mind bath is where our focus is on the word, as Pilda said, studying the word of God and pulling down the stronghold. When I start studying the word of God, keeping my focus on the word, I am pulling down the stronghold, the words of the devil. That is mind bath. So mind bath is never based on our performance of the word. Our mind bath is based on how much I spend time seeking God. How many of you have ever played the game called hide and seek? I don't know how many of you have played that game. Everybody. I have played. Thank God someone played it and says, okay. I was expecting for one person, but there are at least three, four, five. Okay. Now, when you play, uh, when you play hide and seek, what, what do you do? You start counting, correct? From one to ten. One to ten, one to fifteen, one to thirty, yeah. sometimes even. Yeah. 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 And when you start counting, the person has to hide somewhere. Now, when you go and seek, when you start seeking for that person, will you just like that look everywhere around and go? No. If you look like that, you'll never find a person. Yeah. Yes. You are seeking, you are extremely carefully in every corner of where you are searching for that person, every place, making sure that you haven't missed that person, right? Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. That is the meaning of the word seek. So when I am seeking the kingdom of God, that means my focus, my attention is fixed on the word. My attention is fixed on the truth. When my focus is fixed on the word of God and my attention is fixed on the truth, I am able to experience the plan of God because I'm having a mind bath. So according to mind bath, mind bath should be everyone, right? So only one person saying the person had a mind bath. So can we start having mind bath? How many of you have forgotten any day to have a body bath? Let me ask that question first. How many of you? Everyone has forgotten? I have not forgotten. Then why do we find mind bath? Mm, body no bath has every forgotten. day. <laughs> body bath every day means it has become your lifestyle. Every day you can have. In the same way, mind bath should become what? Mind bath should become a every day lifestyle lifestyle praise the lord so did you understand so someone is asking me what is the meaning? Uh, there is no definition certain definition but the meaning is you know i would say when i am uh, determined to find out of something praise god okay so are there any questions on this? did you understand Praise God. Yes. Understood. Understood. Okay, just give me a second. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. So, praise God. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Okay, yeah, that is, you see that. But seek you second the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek you first. The seek kingdom. first. Okay, but seek you first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all this. And his, his, his righteousness. righteousness. And his righteousness. So are, we supposed to seek our righteousness? are we supposed to seek our righteousness or his are we supposed to seek God's righteousness? His righteousness. God's righteousness. God's righteousness. Let me show you the scripture. Just give me Psalm 71, verse number 1. I'll show you the scripture of my righteousness. 71, verse number 1. Okay. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. I commit myself to you. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me. In my righteousness and cause my righteousness. Thy. No, no. Is our prayer going to be deliver me in your righteousness? No. Then what should be our prayer then? Thank you, God. Deliver me in your righteousness. Exactly. David can say, David can say this. I think it is speaking about David. I don't know that clearly, but I think so. The reason why David can say this, or so whoever is saying this, is because it is in the old covenant. It is in the old testament. Today we are not going to say any longer, deliver me in that righteousness. But we have to say what we are already delivered in the righteousness because God has already delivered us in his righteousness. Today we are made the right. God, we have the right standing with God. Because we have the right standing with God, because we have the very nature of God, we are having the righteousness of God. We are created in sorry, the light. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Can you put Enoch on mute? Okay. He's on mute. Press God. Hallelujah. Could not hear you. Can you repeat it? I can't repeat it. Go and repeat it. Okay. No, it was a lot of disturbance and couldn't hear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. See that deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear and to be and save me. 
So that means today we have made the righteousness of God. We have the right standing with God. And that is why he's saying, deliver me in thy righteousness. That means it is God's righteousness on our behalf. So what is the difference between our righteousness and God's righteousness? Any Our righteousness one? would be according to a uh, human standard and God's righteousness is in God's standard. Yes. So our righteousness is what, when, what I did this, I did this, 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 and I am holy. I am perfect. That is self-righteousness. But the righteousness of God is Jesus did this, 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 this and finished it for me on the cross. When I know what the Lord has finished for me on the cross, I will surely be able to experience what he has for me. So we are made the righteousness of God. And that's why he's saying, deliver me in your righteousness. He did not say my righteousness. He said thy righteousness. For thy righteousness in other words means your righteousness. Hallelujah. So our focus should not be on our strength, but our focus should be on God's strength. Our focus should not be on our ability, but our focus should be on God's ability. Our focus should not be on what, how I can live a prosperous, successful life, but my focus should be on how much I can understand what God has finished for me. Praise God. So did you understand? Are there any questions, any doubts? Hallelujah. Understood. Understood. Praise God. Raise hands if you understood. You know, you can take the scripture down. Praise God. Three, four, five. Good. Five out of 11. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise God. Over to you, nice Nanti. Praise the Lord. Praise You're the Lord. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, I keep, uh, you know, when you say, uh, even if I mute also, I'll be keep saying, praise the Lord. So then that is the reason you thought I am mute. Okay. Thank you, Alistair. It was a wonderful session and uh, so refreshing again, going back to the, the, the old notes, you know, the trials, patience and all. It, whenever, uh, you know, when we go back and study, I feel so overwhelmed. Because, uh, you know, we have studied, still we need to study more. That's what I will ask everyone again and again, you know, if possible, uh, you know, if anybody needs the old, you know, date also, I can give you, you know, which study and the link also I can share. So please, please, please go and study. And uh, thank you all of you. And tomorrow also, again, we'll meet at eight o'clock, uh, not at nine o'clock. So see you all tomorrow at uh, eight o'clock again. And... Uh, have a blessed weekend. Listen, we'll pray and wind up. It's 8 o'clock p.m., right? What? What? It's 8 o'clock p.m. Yes, yes. P.m. Not not in the morning, okay? Yeah, we have no class. Because she said a.m. Huh? No, it's not. Said... Because it, she said a.m. Really? Sorry. Not intentional. 8 o'clock, I'll be in the church. <laughs> Yes, for the mass. So we will meet at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Okay, Enoch? Thank you. Alistair, we'll pray and wind up. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this amazing truth. Lord, it is your word. It is your truth which sets us free. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this amazing truth. Lord, as we have heard your word, we are sure, Lord, to apply the same word. We are sure, Lord, to apply the same truth, the same gospel in our life also. So that, Lord, we are able to experience what you have for us working in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father, for teaching us this amazing truth. And, Lord, as we have heard the word, we are sure, Lord, to apply the same word. We are sure, Lord, to apply the same truth in our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are sure, Lord, to seek you, seek your kingdom, seek your righteousness. Because, Lord, as we seek you, as we seek your kingdom, everything else shall be added unto us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray our Father. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye. Bye, everyone. God bless you. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Bye.